Prince Harry has all but dashed hopes of a royal reunion, taking aim at his brother, the king and queen consort in his latest explosive interview. For more, let's bring in royal commentator Dickie Arbiter in London. Dickie, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. I'm really looking forward to your thoughts on this. Yeah, Just give us, straight off the bat, your thoughts on what's happened in the last few days. Well, what's happened is that, once again, Harry has uh, crucified his family. He, uh, he did it in the Netflix uh, six-hour series. He did uh, here he is doing it in his book. His book's getting a lot of mileage, a lot of interviews, one in uh, the UK, three in the United States, and he, he's doing all the running. It's, it's according to Harry, and uh, certainly at the moment, the Buckingham Palace are going to keep absolutely quiet. Do you think there's a world where Harry and his brother do reconcile, do come back together? I don't believe it's any time soon. The wedge has gone so deep, the chasm is so wide, at the moment it is unbridgeable. Harry keeps saying that they've got to open the door, they've got to apologise, uh, he wants to come in, but he's not actually doing anything to encourage them to do that. He is just rubbishing them all the time. It's all about him uh, and alleging that the family are against him. Mm. He's not actually providing any proof, but it is, as I say, all about him and the family are just going to step back and let the dust settle. Yeah. He spoke a lot about his mother, Dickie. Uh, you knew her well, and I just found it uh, completely heartbreaking watching him talking about his dear mother. He lost her at the tender age of 12, just 12 years old, walking behind that carriage. But what do you think Diana would think about this, Dickie? You know, that sort of question is one that's been asked by everybody, but if you look at it, uh, if Diana were around, we wouldn't be talking about this now because Harry wouldn't have gone through mental anguish. He wouldn't be talking about his brother and his dad the way that he is talking about them. And if something like this were to happen while Diana was still alive, well, she wouldn't have allowed it to happen. What is quite interesting that two days before Diana died, and I know this because I spoke to her uh, before she went off to the south of France, that she sat the two boys down and made it very clear to them that they are brothers, their paths are very different, but they've got to look out for each other. Mm -hmm. It's important that they look out for each other. William being, you know, slightly older, took the lead, obviously, but she was very, very adamant that they should look after each other. And what has happened? Happens, Harry's walked out of the royal family with Meghan. They went to Canada first, they went, then now they're in California, and he has done nothing since being in the United States, but rubbish his family. Mm. And if he really expects them to open the door and let him in, then he's got to make amends. Mm -hmm. Now, is he going to go... Looks as though we've lost Dickie there. We've a bit of trouble with his audio there, but uh, thank you so much, Dickie Arbiter, and uh, this is not over yet. More interviews with Harry in the offing. She was once called Britain's most hated woman, so for Camilla Parker Bowles, now Queen Consort, the rehabilitation of her public image has been remarkable. But according to Prince Harry in his latest interview, that was at his expense. He is royal editor at the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers. Rusty, good morning. Thank you for being with us. It's late there, I know. Um, Harry just keeps doing these interviews. Has he been thrown... Has he thrown her under the bus, though? Camilla? Well, good morning to both of you. I mean, it seems that way, doesn't it? I mean, Harry is pretty much a walking contradiction in terms, because in one part of that interview, he's is reading from the book, uh, Spare, which we've been poring over for days now, talking about uh, the fact that uh, Camilla was pretty much, uh, you know, his enemy, that uh, she was sacrificing him on, on the, uh, the PR altar. I mean, it's really, really uh, incredible detail that he says that she was essentially selling stories, placing stories into the press to, uh, to get at him, to rehabilitate her image. I mean, it's pretty explosive stuff. But on the other side, he says that he has compassion for her, being the, the, the number three in the relationship between his father and his mother. I mean, it's all pretty mixed up. Mm. And uh, I, like I've seen throughout the whole of this saga through the book in the last few days of these interviews, uh, Harry really sort of jumbles up quite a lot and, uh, and doesn't make sense of things. Mm. Even that was a, a very pointed comment, I thought. But he gave us more insight into the Queen's role in all of it as well. Here's what he said. 
So if the Queen, the monarch, isn't running the shop, then who is? <laughs> Well, that's a big question, isn't it, Brooke? Because just last week we had uh, Harry saying that during the Sandringham summit, where they all came together and they were thrashing out this deal in order to make uh, you know, Harry and Meghan be able to leave the royal family, he said that pretty much the Queen was just sitting there as a bit part player. And it was uh, his brother screaming at him from across the table, Charles sitting there and uh, you're having a bit of a moan about the situation as well. So, what is it? I mean, is it that the, the Queen was sort of a patsy in, to, in her final days or that she was the, the head of the shop? She was the one running the show. I think that you know, Harry can't have it all, all his own way. And uh, and I get the sense throughout this book and the interviews that he really gets himself in a bit of a muddle to try and deliver his truth. And, uh, you know, it's only one side of the story. And because the royal family aren't going to hit back, I think at the moment that's certainly all we're going to hear. Yeah, that's the question, is it? Is it the truth or his truth? And I guess that's playing out. Uh, today and, and however long. We're going to be talking about this for a long, long time yet. But another moment getting attention, though, him denying he and Meghan ever branded the royal family racist in their interview with Oprah a little while ago now. Did the media twist their remarks, do you think? Well, this is this is really interesting. I think that it's more, the most explosive thing to come out of these interviews and the book uh, as well over the last few days. Because you know, let's look back to that time in early 2021 where Meghan made the comments that uh, a member of the royal family had made pointed reference to the colour of their unborn children's skin. They doubled down on it. They said that it was something that they wouldn't discuss. But that opened up a huge raft of accusations levelled at the royal family about was there a racism problem with in the monarchy, who was the royal racist? And for two years now, they have let those accusations run wild. Now, Harry has rode back on it, saying that it wasn't necessarily about race, it wasn't racism, it was about unconscious bias. Now, he's he's asking for the family to be accountable for their actions in his you know, his, his personal battle with uh, with him. And yet he wasn't accountable for the misinformation that he says was put out at the time. So again, it's one side of the story, having his truth, if you will. And I think uh, it's a rather unfortunate play of events, not only for the family, but for him and, uh, and their relationship moving forward. Well, the good news is, Russell, is that we've got so many more interviews to watch. So yeah. I'm sure <laughs> we'll be able to unpack it all even more in the days to come. Yeah. Are you a bit sick of it? And do you feel a bit sorry for him really quickly, Russell? Uh, yeah, listen, I have had a, a, bit, a bit of a tinge of sadness about the whole thing on behalf of Harry, and I, I definitely think that people will have sympathy. But when you pick it apart, it's just a, it's just an awful mess, isn't it? And uh, listen, who, when's it going to end? I've, I've no idea, but I think it will keep running for now. We'll let you get some sleep, mate. I'm sure you'll yeah, be dreaming of Prince Harry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Harry. He's um, <laughs> continued his media blitz overnight. Mm. Charles, Camilla, William and Kate all in the firing line. Bill, he's branded Camilla as a villain and says that William has betrayed him as well. How far does Harry have to go before the royals reach out to try to stop him, do you reckon? Oh, listen, I've got very mixed reactions about this. At one level, uh, it's like being at a ringside seat in a family bust-up. Uh, and some of the detail is remarkable, but to me it just shows there's a lot of damage and trauma. You know, but at another level, this is just family gossip, and it reminds me that this family are the head of state of Australia. So it really, I think, puts a question mark around uh, our governance structures where we've got a, um, a, a sort of feuding family on the other side of the world who seem to really not like each other at the moment very much. But they're actually people, technically, the head of Australia. So at one level it's gossip, it's scintillating. At another level it's a shame to see a family bust up. But perhaps at the deepest level, why do we still need to keep borrowing a British, a dysfunctional British family to be the head of state of Australia? Tom, what did you make of it all? Because parts of it were really quite heart-wrenching, you know, when he was talking about his mother. Mm. And then there's the other parts, you know, the other side of the PR coin, where it did seem like he was trying to um, drive, drive a knife into to some of the people who'd hurt him. Well, I feel for Harry. I'm about the same age. I saw him walk behind the coffin uh, with his brother all those years ago. And I really feel for him. And he's clearly hurting. He's still traumatised by his childhood, by losing his mother, by the way the media intruded into their lives. And he's felt disempowered. So this has been his strategy to go all out public and just throw grenades. 
I would really like to see it go behind closed doors. I just think he's damaging his relationship with the most important people in his life. Um, I get that he had to make some kind of statement, but I think it needs to end and they need to get together behind closed doors. I do think the sort of the barbs thrown at Camilla, for example, show that some of it is a bit petty. We're talking about their relationship with the media and if, if Camilla is, you know, dangerous and a villain and he talked about being, you know, them being the abusers and him being the abuser, I think it's gone a bit too far and he's probably losing some of the public uh, when it goes to those kind of extremes. Yeah, and I, I think that you, some of the detail that we saw in the book is probably a little bit too much. It's more than what I wanted to know about Prince Harry, or frankly anyone, <laughs> really. G'day Today Show viewers. Uh, thanks for watching YouTube. Our YouTube channel is fantastic. Subscribe now for brand new videos every day and exclusive bonus clips. Come on, you know you want to.